Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault, and once again I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on a very space-aged and futuristic looking target pistol chambered in 22, and is on loan to the channel from my good friend Jack. We have the Beretta Neos. Now on the side of this gun, it says the model is the U-22 Neos, but I've never heard it referred to as the U-22, only the Neos. So yeah, this thing, very different looking than what you normally see from most 22 pistols. So the ergonomics of this thing obviously are going to be affected by its looks. Now one of the things about this gun you're either gonna love or hate are those looks. To be honest with you, it's a little bit too futuristic looking to me and I can understand why some potential buyers may overlook this and say, well, I just don't get what it's trying to be. Is it a blaster from Star Wars? Well, maybe, but I don't think that detracts away from the quality. Now you guys know I like Beretta. I own a lot of Berettas. I don't own one of these. So I'm really anxious to try this thing out. So as always, I wanna give you guys my first impressions before shooting it. So I wanna give you the things that I like and don't like about it. So let's talk about the things that I do like. Well, first of all, from just handling this gun, it really does seem to be well built. Many times, 22s are kind of afterthoughts by gun companies. Well, Breda obviously built this gun from the ground up. It's not a scaled down version of anything else. They built this thing from the ground up and obviously wanted to build a quality 22 target pistol. Another thing about this gun I really like, especially because it is a target pistol, is this full length rail. Now, I did not use any type of optics outside of the iron sights in this test, but obviously you have a lot of mounting options for a number of different optics. So if you're really going to be into competition shooting, that is something that I think is very attractive and a great feature for this gun. So now let's talk about the things that I don't like. And the main thing, and the main gripe I have with this gun is the controls. First and foremost, the controls with the slide stop and the safety, they're very, very small. But then let's talk about the magazine release. And I'll show you the magazine release. Oh wait, there isn't one in the normal spot. Let's turn the gun around. And here we go. There's the magazine release, that little button right there. So when you wanna drop the magazine, your first inclination is to go to the normal spot. And maybe you're used to a heel release. Well, there's not one there either. I have never seen a semi-automatic pistol with a button release for the magazine on the right-hand side. That really took a lot of getting used to. And that button is extremely small and kind of back on the pistol. So if you have a longer finger or bigger hands, you kind of want that button to be up here, but it's not. You gotta take that finger, kind of crunch it back a little bit to get that magazine out. And that really slows things down. So if you are gonna use this as a 22 competition pistol and you need to shoot it fast, that's a little bit awkward and a little bit weird. I'm not saying it's bad, and maybe if I shot this pistol exclusively, that's just something that I would get used to. But if you're used to shooting any other semi-automatic pistol, it's just not in a well thought out place. You want it over here, or even a heel release. That is just really odd. Another thing about this gun, and I think it's endemic to its design, the fact that it has a bull barrel, which I do like, but that makes the front of this pistol extremely heavy. Well, unbalanced. It's not really heavy, it's just unbalanced. You have a lot of mass and weight out towards the front of the gun. And when you're shooting this, especially if you're taking your time, I kind of feel like the gun wants to drop on you a little bit. And I discovered this when shooting, my groups tend to be a little bit low, but I don't think it's the barrel's fault when it comes to accuracy as much as it is the weight. And finally, ergonomically, I don't like the size of this grip. This is a very small and very slanted grip. Now I think the reason it is that way is because these magazines are extremely steep when it comes to the angle. Now that's going to give you a lot better feeding on a 22 cartridge which is rimmed. However, this grip angle 
is very odd. It's even more than a Glock. And if you don't like the Glock grip angle, you're probably not going to like this. And the grip itself is very small. I got pretty big hands and I can wrap all the way around that. That could be good maybe for smaller hands, but if you have larger hands, it's a little bit awkward and a little bit weird. So that's my initial thoughts. But let's see how this thing shoots. Let's get this thing to the range. I'm gonna put a magazine through this thing, as always, at seven yards shooting at an IDPA target. And let's see if I can get a good group with this first magazine. Well, I'm not very happy with that grouping. At seven yards with a 22 target pistol, that's pretty bad. I'm not that great of a shot, but that makes me look horrible. But I think it has to do a lot with the ergonomics. This gun feels very different in my hand. And as I said, the barrel is just very front heavy and I have to kind of compensate for that. So now that I have a magazine through this thing and I kind of understand how it wants to operate and feel, I'm gonna set the target out to 12 yards. I always call this the accuracy portion. It's more to see how I shoot the gun at a longer distance. I'm actually hoping I'm going to do better now. Now that I have a magazine through this, I know what its tendencies are. I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna go for the head of this IDPA target and see how I do. Well, I definitely think I'm learning this gun's tendencies and shooting it a little bit better. I also have to give it a lot of credit that this trigger feels fantastic, but of course I would expect nothing less from Beretta, especially in a dedicated 22 target pistol. But when you do pull that trigger, the striker in this does seem to be a little bit heavy, big, metallic, and has kind of a thud to it. It kind of feels like there's a lot of mass involved when you pull the trigger. And I don't know if that would affect the gun if you tried to shoot it fast in some type of competitive target shooting match or not. But I want to give my wife Becky a shot now and see what she thinks. I'm going to give her two magazines. She loves these little 22 target pistols. I think she's going to have a lot of fun with it, especially because the grip is small and I think is going to be very contoured to her hand perfectly. But let's see what she thinks and what her experiences are. Well, 
All right, so like me with my first magazine, she was not happy with her groups, but she said the gun felt good in her hand and was a lot of fun to shoot. As you also saw, she had a little bit of a feeding issue. So I don't know if the recoil springs in this just need to be a little bit more stout to pick up those rounds off of a full magazine. Sometimes you'll have a little bit of issues with those on many 22 pistols, and we did with this, but it ended up feeding just fine. But otherwise, we have no other failures, no failures to extract, no double feeding, no other issues. And once again, I think that's just a testament to Beretta's quality. The only other thing that she said that she noticed was the front of the gun is a little bit heavy and was shooting a little bit lower than what she was expecting. So she kind of thought the gun was kind of drooping just because of that weight. So, another test I want to give this gun is to see if we can shoot standard velocity ammunition. I brought two different types of ammunition for this portion of the test. First, I'm going to use a pretty high quality CCI standard velocity. You know, I've had issues in the past with some of these guns, 22 specifically, when it comes to the kind of the cheaper bulk ammo and anything that might be subsonic. These things run great with high velocity ammo, but what about standard? A lot of times that's the only stuff people can find on the shelf. So let's try some CCI standard velocity and see if this thing runs. Well, as you saw, it ran and was pretty accurate. The next test I'm going to do is gonna be on the Federal Target Bulk Ammo. This is some of the most common ammo out there. You can buy it in those boxes of 550 rounds. Everyone has it, and I think it's really important if you're gonna have a fun plinking gun to be able to shoot some just fun, cheap plinking ammo through it. And I will say on many tests in the past on various 22s, this is the stuff I've had the most trouble with. So if this thing can feed and fire it, I'm gonna be pretty impressed. So let's give the federal bulk stuff a chance. All right, so it ran great and was also accurate with the bulk stuff, so I'm pretty impressed with this pistol. This is obviously not going to be a concealed carry gun or some type of home defense gun, but I think as a fun 22 target pistol that's not going to break the bank, this gives you a lot of value for your dollar. You have a gun that was built from the ground up as a 22, and so it avoids many of the other problems of guns that are kind of smaller sisters or little brothers to the big brother guns. You know, some gun that was originally chambered in nine millimeter that they scale down to 22. You just have intrinsic problems with that. But this being built from the ground up, I think they were off to a good start. The bull barrel on this is really nice, and I think with some practice, you can really shoot this thing accurately. While I didn't have the best time with it, I can definitely see that with practice, this thing would be a real tack driver. My main issue is still gonna be the placement of this magazine release. This is just really odd. I guess I don't mind it being on this side, 
only if they had one on this side as well. But to only have it on this right side is really weird. And so while I can get used to it, that might be really odd, especially to a left-handed shooter. So they don't have a button on this side, and if you're a left-handed shooter, there is no way your thumb can reach that button. So this is pretty much going to be a dedicated right-hander's pistol only. And I think Beretta should have thought about that before bringing this to market. And I also have to say that just having my finger off of the trigger and resting it around the trigger guard, my finger is on that button all the time and I can see accidentally pushing that button. This, I think, is its biggest flaw and a feature of this gun that needs to be re thought. You can have accidental mags being dropped, or like I was at the range, I kept wanting to push this imaginary button on this side because it's just what I'm used to. But the gun ran flawlessly. It ate everything that I fed through it. I had no failures to eject. Other issues that normally come around with 22. It's well built. I think it's attractive for what it is. While it might be a little bit too futuristic, in my opinion, I could definitely see how some people will think this is just something totally different, something new, really cool to look at, and they may buy it just on the looks alone. So on my star system, how would I rate the U22 Neos by Beretta? Well, for what it is, I'm gonna give it four stars. Four out of five stars for this gun. Well, it's not a gun that I feel like I'm gonna go run out and buy. Even though I am a Beretta collector, it's just too different. It's too futuristic looking. The controls are just too different. But if you're in the market for something that's different or just looking for a dedicated 22 plinking gun that you're not too worried about and don't wanna to spend too much money on but are definitely looking for quality, well, this might be the way to go. It met all of my expectations. It is a Beretta, but I still have those issues with the controls. But beyond that, it ran really good. So for what it is, I like it. I just think a few things have to be rethought out by Beretta. Great trigger. I could definitely see it being accurate. Plenty of space up here for any type of optic that you want to mount. And it's just a fun gun to shoot. And with the smaller grips, this also might be a fantastic gun for youth shooters, especially if you're trying to get your kids into shooting, teach them responsible gun handling, safe gun handling. The grip on this is just the perfect size for a youth shooter. And only chambered in 22, you don't have to worry about too much recoil. And that might be a great market for this gun as well. The younger youth shooters that are trying to get into target shooting or just shooting in general and to teach them how to have fun and be safe around firearms so we can protect our second amendment for many generations to come so there you go my range report on the beretta u22 neos pistol this particular example is made in the united states i don't know if they make these in italy as well but this one is made here in the u.s so let me know, do you guys own one of these? Do you want to own one of these? Have you owned one of these? And what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with my assessment of the controls? I'd love to know in the comments section below. So, as always, thanks for watching.